This is the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Life Coach Kelly Hanlon McCormick, and today is episode number 96. There is no going back. Welcome to Transforming Anxiety. I'm your host, Kelly McCormick. I'm a mom to two boys, a wife, friend, daughter, and sister, and I'm a certified life coach, yoga teacher, and soon-to-be mindfulness meditation teacher. I'm no stranger to anxiety, and I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and your emotions so that you, too, can transform anxiety into calm, peace, and whatever you want for your life. I'm so glad you're here. Well, hey there. Welcome on in. Wherever you are, whatever you're up to today, I hope you're doing well. Maybe you're listening to this as you're walking or wrapping presents, driving to get last minute gifts or groceries. Before we even start today, I want to say I am so grateful that you're here. I am so glad to share this time and this space with you. And I wish you the happiest of holidays. I know COVID holidays are weird and maybe a little sad or disappointing or lonely or just completely not what we were expecting or wanting, but I hope that you can find in yourself some steadiness, some contentment as we close out the year, that you remember that that's inside you, that you never had to go out there to find that steadiness or contentment anyway. Also, before we get started today, I want to ask, please, please, that you take a quick second to rate and review the podcast as we get started into the new year. It's a huge, huge help to our other anxious friends anxious friends who want to find some support and some guidance to transform their own experience with anxiety, which there is no shortage of right now. And lastly, before we get started, I want to remind you that there is still time to join the Fierce Calm Project this year. At least if you're listening to this in somewhat real time, there's time. (laughs) We're finishing out this year with our topic, Your Future Self. And we're going to be starting soon on the first topic of 2021, which is living with intention. It's going to be so great. I'm going to be sharing huge updates to the Fierce Calm Project with you soon. I promise to pop in here and share all of that with you. There are so many exciting things that we're going to be doing and adding over there. I really can't wait to unveil all of that soon. I promise. So stay tuned. Keep your eyes and ears peeled for that. All right. So today, there is no going back. I want to talk a little bit about science and a little bit about coaching. Well, not too much science. (laughs) That's not what we're here to do. But enough science that we can borrow a universal truth discovered by Hubble and apply it, metaphorically speaking anyway, to our individual and collective experience here in this sweet life of ours. So science first. Let's talk about the universe. (laughs) The universe, it turns out, is constantly expanding. You've probably heard of this. Maybe you remember this from your high school science class. Ever since the Big Bang, the universe has been constantly expanding expanding, which means all of the galaxies are moving away from each other. The universe is so vast that it may as well be infinite. So there's like this eternal nature to this expansion. There is no wall out there in distant outer space that we're going to bump up against, which, I mean, this gets pretty mind bendy pretty quickly, right? All of these galaxies, if you picture a you are here, X marks the spot map in your mind. We're in the Milky Way galaxy, in case you forgot. But there's all of these galaxies, and every galaxy is in a never-ending state 
of moving away, of expanding, of moving forward, progressing, growing, right? Moving away from all of the other galaxies. The universe, which holds all of the galaxies, is constantly expanding. All right, that's the end of the science. (laughs) We're going to just do broad sweeping strokes for science class here. But I want to use this idea today, this universal truth that Hubble, you know, the Hubble telescope, Hubble discovered this back in 1925. And what's true for our entire universe is also true for us individually and collectively. We are also constantly expanding. All right, let me back up. Here we are, the last week or so of 2020, a wild year the wildest year, right? In so many ways for so, so many of us. And there are these small lights at the end of this tunnel. There's very promising vaccine news making headlines. There's a new administration that's taking office in a few weeks that brings with it a strong message of unity and and equality and kindness. There is committed education, awareness, activism on a lot of fronts right? Social justice, women's rights, the climate crisis, immigration, and more. We've all been in this pressure cooker of uncertainty, plus quarantining, plus divisiveness and rage, plus anxiety and confusion, plus disconnection. (laughs) There's no small amount of stuff going on. And with these lights, those little flickers of hope at the end of this little metaphorical tunnel, There's a strong sense all around us of wanting to go back. Have you heard this from friends and family? Have you felt this? That you're ready to go back to the before? The pre-pandemic world? Back to what's familiar and normal? Yeah. So let's talk about it. I want to offer this idea of an ever-expanding universe to you to your inner self, to your outer self even, your life, to your family, your friends, your community, your state, country, world, that we are all expanding, that there is no going back. Now, before we get all sad about that and bummed and worried, let's get specific about what this means and looks like. Zoom way in for a moment, and I want you to consider your own unique and personal experience of this year, whatever your situation, whatever your circumstances, it's very easy for us to bemoan the difficulties, right? To complain about what's hard and bad and disappointing. Sure. And I don't want to dismiss that. Hey, this year has sucked (laughs) in so many ways. This is hard stuff. There is no getting around that. But I do want to hold that aside for just a moment. And I want you to consider, just consider five things that happened this year that happened because this year was what it was. Five things that were positive, that were different in a good way, that were new and exciting, that were meaningful, that were helpful or fun or interesting or eye-opening. I'll give you a few examples from my life, from my year. So with virtual school, I've gotten to see both of my kids in their element while they're learning and interacting with their teachers and classmates. It's been so cool. It's been really heartwarming to watch them engage with and laugh with their people, to listen to the kinds of questions that they ask, to hear the answers they give when they're asked a question. So that's been cool. It's been been fun to have my husband home with me. I work from home anyway, and now that the whole family is here, I've gotten to have lunch with them, and my husband and I have started a new habit. We've been taking long afternoon walks by the lake when it's somewhat nice outside now that it's getting cold more regularly here in Kansas City, and it's been great to have an uninterrupted hour with him pretty much every day. That's been cool. Also, there's a family that we decided to pod up with. They have kids our kids' age, and we really enjoy their company. And prior to pandemic life, they were going all the time, and we were going all the time. 
But thanks to a far quieter life and fewer activities like in the evenings and weekends and stuff, we have seen them a couple times a week for months at this point. And it's really solidified our friendship between all eight of us, the kids' bonds, the adults' bonds, the kids and the adults. <laughs> We're basically family now. They're awesome. And thanks to this year, we've enjoyed so much more time with them in a completely different and deeper and far more meaningful friendship and relationship. It's been very cool. And puzzles and books and games. <laughs> On our own and as a family, we have done a lot of puzzles this year. We've read so many books, some together, some on our own. We've played more games than we ever would have had time for before this. It's been really fun. And I will say this too, emotional education, for sure. Because of everything that's going on, we have had more honest and sometimes more difficult and just more real conversations with our kids. We've talked about racism and immigration. We've talked about politics. We've talked about the climate crisis, poverty, class, financial health. We've talked about so many things that are around, but just either haven't been in our face, or honestly, we just haven't really had to confront. I mean, to be super transparent, right? Until now. 2020 was a really raw year, and we took that opportunity as a family to really dig in with the things that we need to be digging in with, that we want to focus on, places where we want to donate and volunteer, organizations that we want to support, and we've created, actually, this is really fun, we've created something new in my business because of all of that, and that is one of the things I'm going to be telling you more about so soon. I'm so excited to share with you. So all of these, these are all things that would not have happened, or at least wouldn't have happened now if it hadn't been for 2020 and what 2020 was. These are great things. Not in the sense that they're 100% fun and games and happy and exciting, but that they're necessary and meaningful and important. And some of them are happy and fun, (laughs) which is great. And some of them are just, well, crucial. So I invite you to find three or five or 10 experiences in your life over this past year that came up that have held a lot of value to you. Give some time and space to those things, those experiences. Acknowledge them. This year has been hard, sure, but it's also been beautiful. This has been a crash course in what Glennon Doyle calls brutal, right? Brutal and beautiful. 2020 is like peak brutal. Now, the human way is to desire familiarity. We like things to go in a predictable way. We like to understand and we like to exert what control we do have over our lives. We love things to be familiar. So there's a very strong pull, especially now that we can almost taste a post-pandemic world, to crave the old familiar ways of living, what we were doing, how we were showing up, what we liked, what we knew, where we went, who we were with, all of those most ordinary things. And a lot of us are getting a little graspy for those things, especially, like I said, as it's becoming easier to imagine a post-pandemic reality, how that's going to come about. So, all right, let's zoom back out now. You've identified a few things that were great in 2020, that were possible because of 2020. Or if you haven't yet, I hope you will. Take some time to really find and acknowledge those things for yourself. Those things make a new normal possible. Those things start cracking open the doors and windows on possibility. They start opening and widening the aperture in our mind's eye to whole new ways of being, ways of connecting, ways of helping, ways of communicating and working and playing and contributing. Those things that have shifted have wiggled loose the solidity and perhaps the rigidity of what was. They've challenged the status quo. 
So if we were to believe that we too are constantly expanding, that we too are always changing and opening and moving forward, that we too figuratively and literally cannot go back, that there is no going back, then what? I love this idea. It's a little unsettling at first. I get it. It challenges the mind's desire for familiarity. There's some dissonance. It feels like it's dissonance in our cells (laughs) when we shake loose all that was and is. We don't naturally love a challenge or change. But what if you started by taking the things that made 2020 positive or interesting or eye-opening and you infused 2021 with those things? What if you took those with you? And let's say some things do, quote unquote, go back to normal because some will, right? Kids will return to school. Businesses will reopen. We will shop and travel and get together again. Sooner or later, those things will all happen. Sure. And, and we can bring what we've learned, what we've seen, what we've experienced, and we can use all of that to inform what we want as we move forward, as we expand. We can bring our new perspectives on social justice as we return to work. We can bring our newfound gratitude for connection to our parties and our get-togethers and family gatherings. We can question all of the going and doing and busyness that filled our calendars up when it's possible to start going and doing again. We can go and do in a far more, far more wholehearted and intentional way. Not just busyness, but we can be. Because we aren't just human doings and human goings. We're human beings, after all. So some of the logistics of the pre-pandemic world will restart and will, will reopen. Yes. And thank goodness for that. But as you consider this, as you consider your own expansiveness and a sense of coming back home to the world, and not just being in your home, a sense of coming back home to each other in a more daily and tactical way, what can you bring with you? What new things and ideas and understandings can you bring with you? This isn't a return. We cannot go back. I'd argue we don't want to go back. Our 2019 selves are so very different than our 2021 selves anyway. We've lived and seen and experienced and endured and survived so very much. Your 2021 self won't be the same. There is no going back. So I would love to hear how you're going to implement this. How you're going to take your 2020 and infuse your future with it. What will never look the same? What will you not take for granted? What will you work harder to support and uncover and change? I'd love to hear. Tag me on social media. I'd love for you to share your ideas and tag me in your posts. I'm at K Hanlon McCormick. Okay, that's it for today. I want to wish all of you a very happy, merry, and safe and healthy holiday season. Because (laughs) two weeks in COVID time is pretty much a whole season. Yeah. Really, though, please take care of yourself. Rest when you need to. Wear your mask. Be willing to say no if you want and need to. And I will see you again next week. Next week, we're going to talk about intentions and goals. We're going to get all set up for the new year. Sound good? All right, I'll see you at the same time, same place next week for that. And until then, everyone, take care. Do you have someone to help you with your stress, anxiety, worry, and overwhelm? If not, I would love to be your coach. The Fierce Calm Project is my virtual coaching program where we get to go in on topics like this one 
and I can help you apply these lessons to your life so that you're creating your own transformation. We do live coaching calls, guided meditations, on-demand yoga classes. We hold book club where we read books your neighborhood book club won't. And there's lots of bonus content that I've created just for you. When you're ready to take what you're learning on the podcast to a whole other level, then come on over and check out the Fierce Calm Project at kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash fiercecalmproject.